Hey y'all, it is Andrea here at VW Family Farm, and I just wanted to take a few minutes today, show you around uh, our pantry and our house and everything, and talk to you guys for a few minutes about what you are doing and some things we are doing to prepare for this winter and another potential lockdown that we could be facing and just some quick tips that might help you out so uh let's just take a little few minutes together and and talk and tour and all those fun things all right so first off i just want to say this is not in any way a video made out of fear it's not in any way to inspire fear in you guys it's just a video hopefully to help people out i'm not gonna take you and show you every single thing we've done to prepare and every single thing we have stocked up and everything but i do want to show you several things uh, because we all know back in the spring and late winter things did go haywire and if you went to the grocery store during that time you know there were shortages of certain some of them strange things and this is just a few tips to avoid that happening to you again um, obviously it's too late now to go start a homestead and start growing food and everything because if you're in America we're heading into winter but these are some things anyone can do whether you have a homestead or whether you just live in an apartment in the city so these are just some tips I want to share with you guys so first thing I want to talk to you guys about is back in the spring if you grocery shopped you noticed there was a tremendous flower shortage so if that happens again because it's already looking like uh, we're heading back into maybe a possible lockdown even if we don't it's already looking like at the grocery stores that the supply and demand has been affected again there's way more demand than there is supply on certain things like toilet paper we've all heard of the toilet paper shortage so if it happens again and you cannot get flour that's my first tip I wanted to share with you guys is how to avoid that you might hear lots of action in the background Emily is putting up a Christmas tree uh, so just ignore that I told her just carry on she is having a ball so that's what all the door opening and closing is so you can see here this is my wonder meal I have only had this a couple years but I love this thing there's several different grain mills out there and in fact I used one for several years that fit on my KitchenAid mixer and I'm gonna try to find one of those and link it below I don't know if those are in stock right now most grain mills are out of stock so I will try to find that KitchenAid attachment and as well as I've been super pleased with this wonder mill so those are both good grain mill options so you might be thinking what in the world would I even want a grain mill for well a couple things if flour goes out of stock again now or sometime in the future having your own grain mill is pretty much priceless because you can pretty much order off the internet um, wheat berries and those are what is ground into wheat flour whether that whether you're eating whole wheat flour whether you're eating white flour all of that comes from the wheat berry there's different varieties um, but you can pretty much get those on Amazon I like to order mine from Azure Standard I do a grocery pickup through them once a month and order all kinds of staples and that is one of the main things I order from them you can see I've written on my buckets here these are just food grade five gallon buckets uh, I get soft white wheat berries and I sprout those and I use sprouted flour just like I do um, any type of flour uh, anything I want to make like cookies or pie crust or anything like that and then down below I also order hard white wheat berries and that's what I grind up for sourdough so that's how I store my wheat berries I freeze those for 10 days so they get a hard freeze so that any uh, bugs or eggs from bugs die and then um, I can store them in here pretty much for an unlimited amount of time now if you notice I also have a bucket for flour I do keep some unbleached unbromated white flour to mix in uh, with these because this is gonna make a whole wheat bread things like that if you're transitioning your family 
they might not like it if you go straight from white flour to that so that's what i do that is how i have flour all the time even when there's a shortage i also just want to throw in right now it's also an excellent excellent way to go organic because to go out and buy organic whole wheat flour you're gonna pay a small fortune but if you buy organic wheat berries especially from somewhere like azure standard that you can buy in bulk you don't have to you can buy a small amount from them but the bigger the package the more money you save um, and then you save even more money and that's how you can have organic bread and bread products for a lot cheaper than you would think so let's move on before I move on though there's always a link to Azure Standard below it does not cost you a penny more it just tells them that you heard about them through me and that helps out our channel and our family and so I appreciate every one of you that has clicked that link in the past and that has made a purchase so thank you so let's move on to other things I think are tips of you should know heading into this next season good quality fats that's another thing i try to store up again that's from azure standard i've got coconut oil in here i usually buy a five gallon bucket of that but i couldn't get it this time so you can see i've got a couple gallons i've got some olive oil from sam's i've actually got some coconut oil organic coconut oil up there from sam's as well because those are things i use in soap making and things like that as well so i keep those on hand they're just it's always good to have healthy fats to cook with my other favorite healthy fat is home rendered lard this is so great to cook vegetables in so good for you especially if your pigs are pasture raised it's full of vitamin d it's just awesome stuff so also back there in uh, my pantry area with the buckets i keep all kinds of other grains back there like rice and um, dry beans oats things all those kinds of things like that that i buy those in bulk from azure standard and then just like the wheat i freeze those kill any eggs that might be in them and put them in buckets and they last really for me they've lasted kind of an unlimited amount of time now i, I try not to buy like so much that it's going to last like 15 years or something like that but i do like to buy in bulk i'm a bulk shopper a lot of ladies like to go shopping for clothes I like a well-stocked pantry. It's almost like a passion of mine is keeping my house and home stocked up. Uh, we can pretty much make anything we want to at any time. So dry goods is my number one recommendation. Buy things that will store well. I've had people tell me that at food pantries and things like that, they almost cannot give those things away sometimes. People just do not even know what to do with dry beans but they will take all the convenience foods and leave those things on the shelf when in reality those are the powerful foods that pack a punch as far as giving you nutrition and energy and things like that and they will last you for so long and a lot of them are very cheap um, dry beans are pretty cheap so even if you don't have access to a big bag when you're in the store just pick up a few small bags because they go a long way so you don't have to do the bucket thing if you don't want to but um, I would definitely encourage you if you're making a trip to the store anytime soon grab a few more packages of grains next is this beauty right here I would suggest if you get the opportunity to get yourself a Berkey um, this is my favorite brand by far I had a knockoff in fact it's sitting over here it's empty at the moment but I would encourage you to get a Berkey in fact that's another thing that went out of stock crazy fast and they were just gone everyone wanted to make sure that they had a good source of water and so it's it's just invaluable i've told y'all before that water is something we all use every day even if you say i'm not a water drinker more than likely what you drink involves water tea coffee kombucha all those types of things the base of those is water so make sure that you're putting good things in your body through your water um, and the great news is the Berkey's have come back in stock um, I, I believe they're catching up now I don't know they may have another rush on them with Christmas coming and the best news is they're having a sale so I'm going to drop a link to those below if you've been on the fence thinking about it 
it's a great time because of the sale. You can save some serious cash. And I actually saw, click the link and check this out because I don't remember the exact days, but the first so many orders actually get a free gift. So click it and find out if, if it's uh, something you can afford and invest in. I promise you won't be disappointed. Um, I'm just tickled to have this. I've waited a long time and it's, it's helped our whole family drink water because let's face it, it's more fun to get it out of this than out of something else. So um, it's just, I'd encourage you, if you've been on the fence, take the leap. Emily is putting up the tree, sped, spreading some Christmas cheer. That is the saddest looking pre-lit tree I've ever seen. That's all that's lit. <laughs> but she's gonna fix it. She oh, is yeah. gonna fix it. Maybe. I'm very good at this kind of stuff. If <laughs> y'all couldn't tell. <laughs> Is that sarcasm? That's sarcasm. You actually are good at this kind of stuff. All right, we got to get back to our video. See ya. Bye. <laughs> All right, of course there's the canned goods and it's never too late to be planning for next year. And y'all know me, or maybe if you're new here you don't, but I have canned goods stored literally everywhere. Um, it's a passion of mine, it's fun. It, I find it fulfilling to grow a garden and harvest it and can it and try. It's like a challenge with myself to try to grow enough for our family for an entire year. So really it's too late to do that if you haven't already got that going for yourself. Except, except, there is no shame in canning store-bought food. So just like the other day, I found potatoes literally dirt cheap at, get it, dirt cheap, at Sam's. I bought like 40 pounds. And so I'm actually probably gonna wind up canning some of those and there's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing like growing all your own food, but if you don't, there's nothing shameful about buying it and then still canning it or preparing it or, or what, not canning it, just cooking it. I don't think we should ever shame ourselves as long as we're still buying real food um, for doing that. I really just don't. So if you find an awesome deal, in fact, we've found really good deals around this time. Once the holidays are over, they will almost give away turkeys at the store to get rid of them. That's a great thing to do and bake or smoke them and make your own lunch meat, things like that. So look for deals. Grab those up and prepare those at home. And that leads me to another point. If you didn't grow a garden this year or you didn't grow a very big garden and you wanna go bigger or whatever the case may be, it's time to order seeds. That's another thing I would say going into another who knows what we're facing in the winter and spring. Um, get your seeds ordered sooner rather than later because it's got to be a priority for us if we are going to grow a garden next year. Um, I encourage you to check out Baker Creek or Haas Tools or both. Um, they both have a lot to offer and so I would definitely encourage you check them out. Um, I believe there's links below for them as well. Um, I'll check that out but I would just encourage you check them out. Uh, look and see. They have so many varieties. They have such great germination and just we've had such great results with their seeds. Plus awesome, awesome people behind the companies and that means a lot to me as well. So plant those gardens now is the time. Get those lists made and um, start getting those things on the way. You might not can see it very well, but that is my hidden stash of honey. That's one of our favorite sweeteners here on the homestead, produced by our very own bees. There's some more over there. You can see that's some store-bought maple syrup. The rest of the medicine cabinet. It's teas and tinctures, herbs and spices and all kinds of things like that to keep us healthy and treat any ailments we might have. All right, finally, I wanna end up out here. You can see that is a massive amount of eggs. I want to talk eggs and meat. There's freezers all over the place full of frozen vegetables and meat and things like that out here. I'm not gonna show you all of that because of course I would encourage you guys to start growing your own meat. Get you some laying hens and start growing your own eggs and uh, growing those chickens to lay you those eggs and all those kinds of things. Grow some meat chickens. Um, grow a steer, grow um, some pigs, all those kind of things. I would encourage you if you have the land and you have the desire to do that and produce your own food, to go for it. Uh, a lot of people are scared of raising animals. They think that it's gonna be difficult and very time consuming and all those things. And while yes, in a way it can be, 
it's nothing none of us can't handle and it's so rewarding and it just means so much knowing what is in your food but but if you can't or I would rather not or there's a whole host of reasons I understand those as well but here's what I would recommend this is where I want to get real and I want y'all to hear me out through this when things went haywire back at the end of the winter and early spring things went crazy you would go in the local grocery store and you could maybe buy one or two packages of meat uh, per family and that just doesn't go very far the shelves were empty and what was there was limited on how much you could get eggs were limited to a dozen per family that doesn't go very far as well so here's what I would say and this I'm just opening up and being honest with you guys as a farmer where we were coming from during that time and what happened was when people can't get things from the grocery stores then they start turning to farms and local farms and things like that and I would just encourage you guys make those relationships right now while you can um, support those local farmers right now while you have other options um, appreciate that what they are producing is a quality product and it's worth something and don't expect to get it for the Walmart price or for the bottom dollar price because you're probably not going to because it probably has a lot more uh, quality to it I hate to say it and I don't know how else to say it other than that uh, it's probably not been given a lot of things that you guys don't want in your food um, they have found alternative ways to care for those animals and things like that and they've probably bought I know they've bought more expensive feed for those animals because a small farmer cannot get the deals that a large farm can get it's just we can't um, the sheer volume of feed they buy they just get a much better deal. She always takes my flip flops. I'm wearing them right now. But here's where I'm going with this. When the bottom fell out back in the spring, we had an like influx of people wanting and needing meat and eggs and milk and all those types of things. And what we had to do was we have had several loyal customers that have been with us for years they've supported us they've bought our eggs they have bought anytime we were selling hogs they would buy a half or a whole they would buy steers and things like that now not everyone is capable of doing that but when it came down to it to sell out from under them when they had been with us all that time to people that we never met before that now are just wanting eggs wanting meat and all that because they can't get it at Walmart we had to make a determination and what we had to determine was we've got to hold on to enough let's just use eggs for example we've got to hold on to enough eggs for our loyal customers that we know they're gonna want and we had to turn people down and I hate that but and our, our meat business is not up and going yet like it's gonna be next this coming year in 2021 and then in 2022 we're gonna have so much meat um, that we're producing that we can sell to the public but we just weren't there yet and so we had to stick with those who had been with us it was our turn to return the favor so to speak so I encourage you I plead with you support your local farmers because you don't know when you're gonna need them um, they need you all the time to be able to keep going but there comes a day where you need them as well and so I just encourage you love on them tell them you appreciate them and I'm not saying this for us like try to buy everything from us because a lot of you have people just like us right down the road I'm encouraging you to make a relationship with them and to um, so that when the next thing comes they're gonna be there for you I, I can pretty much guarantee it because there's they feel a bond with you when you've been there with them when they were trying to get their feet off the ground um, they they will remember that I promise and guarantee it so 
Um, that's just the last thing I want to encourage you with. I'm not going to go show you all our meat and everything. You've seen it before. Um, and so, but I would encourage you if you can start small next year, grow you some meat chickens or something like that. You can do that in a neighborhood in town, just in your backyard. Um, grow you a little chicken tractor full. It will go a long way and, um, meet your local farmers. I, I would encourage that as well and support companies like Azure Standard that are not your run of the mill big chain grocery store. It's run by a family and um, they've struggled. They've almost, they've went through hard times. I'll say that before, but their little customers kept them in business as well. And that's just how it works for family owned businesses. You guys make it, you make it work. Um, and, and you keep, you keep small businesses afloat and small family farms. So I want to say thank you. And I want to say, if you feel unprepared right now, I hope this video has helped you with some practical things you can do. And um, just don't panic. There's no need to panic. There, there is um, lots of things that we can do to get through this. And hopefully there's nothing, nothing going to come of it, that there won't be shortages again and things. But if so, I hope this helps you knowing what you can do to avoid those. So I will see you guys on the next one. Love and appreciate y'all. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit that bell because we're uploading all kinds of times now. Trying to stick with Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. But this week is Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to you guys. It's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. So I will see you on the next one, which will be tomorrow. See you guys. God bless. She's working her magic. Oh yeah, oh look at that. That was a cool TSC find. Let's do a side shot. How cute is that? Oh, it spins. It spins. Okay, show them your homemade decorations for where this is a little bonus footage. Got some burlap ribbons. Well, that's cute. With some bandana. Yeah. Okay. Set straight. Show them the rest. We got Emily made all these last year. This, it's bandana, and it's got a little like, plastic ornament, and then like lacy. It was just some old Entwine. ornaments we didn't like anymore. Yeah. She covered. Cute, girl. Then, oh, this one's messed up. Jar lids. Rings. Rings. Jar rings, a little bandana ribbon, some yarn. Cute. Anything else? I got some more ones over there, but they're kind of like these. So cute.